Hey everybody, today on Bella Renovari, we're gonna go over something that I have gotten a lot of requests for. So this piece back here, it's not wood, it is laminate furniture. So I'm gonna show you guys how to paint laminate furniture and we're gonna do something really cool. It'll be inspired by a British designer. So if you guys wanna see how to paint furniture that's not all wood and you wanna see it done pretty awesomely, stay tuned. If you are new here, my name is Kristana and I am a furniture artist. So hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can paint a piece of furniture that is not solid wood. So this little chest back here, it's actually opened. You could probably put some cool stuff in it. It is laminate. So I'm gonna show you that you can paint that and also it's going to have a really cool finish on it. It's inspired by Paul Smith who is actually a designer out of the UK or he's a British designer. He does clothes and furniture and all that great stuff and I thought that this piece with it being a kind of a mid-century modern feel it has the look of a mid-century modern piece. It's not a real mid-century modern piece because obviously it's laminate. I don't really know where it's from. I got it from a thrift store, maybe Ikea, maybe somewhere else, I don't know. But we are going to make it super awesome and I'm gonna show you how to do a Paul Smith or they call it um, barcode stripes. So it's gonna be a striped piece that's gonna look really awesome. So not only are you gonna learn how to paint a piece of furniture that's not wood, but you're gonna learn how to paint stripes without bleed through. It's gonna be super awesome. So stay tuned guys, because we are gonna prep this piece even though it's not solid wood. The first thing I do with all my pieces no matter what is I go ahead and clean them. So I'm gonna clean this piece really well before we move on to the next step. I'm gonna use Dixie Belle's White Lightning Cleaner to prep my piece. So the first thing I'm gonna do is clean it. So what I do is I pour the cleaner into warm, clean water, and then I take a rag and I just wipe down the entire piece. You do wanna make sure that you go after you have used a cleaner, you wanna go with a clean rag and clean water and get any residual cleaner off so you don't have any kind of adhesion issues. I always flip my pieces upside down or on their back so that I can clean the bottom as well because there's dust and cobwebs and things. And so I always wanna make sure that I completely clean my piece. Because this piece is laminate, I'm going to use a gripping primer. So what this is, is Dixie Belle Slick Stick. And this allows me to paint over any kind of shiny surface, and this allows me to paint those non wood pieces. So for those of you who are asking how you can paint Ikea furniture that's not wood, this is what you're going to need. I am going to roll this on, but you can brush it on, you can spray it on. I'm using a high density foam roller, and I'm going to just do thin coats. So what you wanna do is you wanna put thin coats all over your piece, wait a few hours, do your second coat, and then you're gonna wait 24 hours after your second coat to actually apply your paint. This is one coat of Slick Stick 
applied to the entire piece. So now I'm going to go back over it because it's been a few hours and I'm going to put my second coat of slick stick on. As you can see, it's a little bit more even and you can see that it's not as blotchy, but this primer, this gripping primer is what's going to allow me to get a awesome finish on a piece of furniture that is not wood. I have put two coats oh. and it has been sitting for 24 hours, actually over 24 hours. I took the day off yesterday, but it is ready for paint. Now I have been driving by this structure and I've been driving by it over and over and I love the color. And so every time I go by it, I'm like, I'm going to take a picture of it. I don't really need to because I know what color it is. So I pulled out my crayons and the color is yellow orange. So it's like a yellow orange color. And so I think that that is the color for this piece. So I'm going to show you how I figure out what actual colors need to go into a custom mix and then we will custom mix it in a bigger batch. Hopefully that makes sense. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to take my crayon and get a paper towel or a paper plate and I want to do this on a white background so that way the color looks bright and I will be able to see it. Okay so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually just kind of draw this crayon. What I did is I tested a few crayons and when I found the one that was close to the color of the structure, that is when I pulled it out. So we want to get my paint close to this color. So here we are right here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the paint that I think would go in this and I'm just going to play around and I'm going to put it up next to this and see if we can match it. I cannot find my color wheel, but a lot of times on your color wheel, it will show you what colors you need. I've worked with colors for so long that I have an idea of what I need to use. So I'm going to pull out some Curdle Mustard by Dixie Belle, and I'm going to pull out some Florida Orange by Dixie Belle. I know, these are so, I'm a, clearly a messy painter. So one thing that you can do is you can take your paints and you can take the lid or you can put your color up kind of close to it and you can kind of compare right here and you can know if they're super close, then you know that this is probably gonna be one of the colors that you have to use. So you've got this color, right? This is the Colonel Mustard. And then this is my Florida Orange. Let's try to get up there. So that's my Florida orange and that's pretty close as well. So I'm going to attempt to only use these two colors to mix this yellow orange. Plus it says yellow orange in it. And because this is kind of a deeper yellow, I went with the Colonel Mustard because Colonel Mustard is more of a mustard color versus the Daisy or a bright yellow. Uh, this is more of a mustard kind of deeper color. So that is why I went with the Colonel Mustard. I'm gonna take about a tablespoon of the Colonel Mustard and put it on my plate. And then after that, I'm gonna put about a half a tablespoon of my Florida orange, and I'm going to mix those together to see if I can get a color close to that yellow orange that I want. Now that I've completely mixed those two colors, I'm gonna take a little paintbrush and I'm gonna put it up against my color swatch to see if it matches. And this is pretty much perfect. I love how this has turned out. So I'm gonna make a bigger batch now. I did not measure, I know, <laughs> but I poured a bunch of kernel mustard in there and about half of the amount of the Florida orange that I did. So I'd say it's probably a one to a half ratio. So one cup of kernel mustard to half a cup of Florida orange. I'm gonna mix it up and I'm going to test my bigger batch again against my color swatch to see if it's the color that I want, which it is, it came out perfect. And so now I'm going to go ahead and just do a base coat of this color on my entire piece because it has been 24 hours since the slick stick dried. This does need two coats. So I'm gonna go ahead and put one coat wait for it to completely dry, and then do my second coat.
This now has two coats of my custom mix color. So now you're looking at the colors that I'm gonna use for my stripes on the piece. So we're gonna use In the Navy by Dixie Bell, Holy Guacamole by Dixie Bell, French Linen, Pinecone, and Colonel Mustard. So Paul Smith is a designer and I wanted to show you one of his furniture pieces. He normally does clothes, but this is gonna be my inspiration. So I'm gonna use a square to make even lines down my piece. And as you saw my inspiration piece, the lines actually have different widths. So we're not trying to make them all even right here or evenly spaced. I'm just trying to make them so that the lines are straight. So my square is perfect for that. I'm gonna go slow on this first stripe so that I can show you how to get a super crisp line. So first of all, I like the sticks painter's tape. I get that from Amazon and I'll put the link below. But what I do is, because I'm using a pencil, what I do is I take my tape and I am carefully lining it up on the outside of that pencil line. And I just wanna make sure that it stays straight and I'm kind of burnishing it down while I go. I am gonna use a metal spatula because there's a lip on the bottom of it to get to that 90 degrees to make sure that that tape is butted right up against there so there's no spaces. You're gonna add your second piece of tape on the outside of the other pencil line exactly the same way that you added the other piece of tape. After I have taped both of my pieces down, I'm gonna go ahead and burnish it really well with a microfiber cloth. This way I know that it's nice and secure. Now, I'm gonna use Dixie Bell's Satin Clear Coat. You can use whatever clear coat you want. You want to go over that seam of the tape. So the inside seam where that pencil mark is, you wanna go over that first. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to seal that tape where it meets the paint, where the paint is gonna go. And this will prevent any kind of paint seeping underneath that tape. So then now you're gonna have nice crisp lines, but you do wanna make sure whatever sealer you're using, you smooth it out. That way when, you, when it dries and you do put your tape on, you have a nice smooth finish. So you wanna make sure you put this on and then you wanna allow it to dry before you actually paint over it. I'm gonna use my In the Navy and we're going to paint our first stripe. So you're gonna do one coat and generally I do two coats just so that I don't miss any spots. So we're gonna do one coat, I allow that to dry and then I go over my stripe again with a thin second coat. That way I don't miss any spots. Be careful and make sure you don't go over the edge of the tape so that way you're not getting paint on the areas that you don't want your stripes. It's also worth noting that I allow my base coat to dry for a few hours before I start adding tape and painting my stripes. I want it to dry really nice. So here I'm putting my second coat of my paint. Now I'm gonna pull the tape off while my second coat is still dry. This is the moment of truth. These lines are so super crisp. It's amazing. It's amazing how that clear coat trick can really make you just, it's, if you ever wondered how people get clear lines, clean, crisp lines, that's gotta be how. So now you know this trick and you will never use another trick. You are always gonna have perfect lines. So I continued on this piece, taping off and doing my clear coat and painting my lines. As you can see right here, there's different widths of these in the navy lines. And I just kind of eyeballed to see where I wanted all of my colors. So I did use that piece as inspiration, but I didn't copy it. So I just put my colors wherever I wanted. So have fun with it. 
put your lines and your colors wherever you want or if you're doing a piece where you need to have all the lines the same width then go ahead and do that if you're only doing something with black and white then only do black and white but i had fun with this one and i did a bunch of color on here Revealing these crisp lines is never going to get old, ever. The feet on this piece are actually solid wood, so I unscrewed all of the feet because I wanted to have a lighter wood. So I unscrewed all the feet and I took it outside and I used my surf prep sander. I used an 80 grit and then I used a 120 grit, but I used an 80 grit to strip off that existing finish and I just left them. I left the raw wood because I liked that light contrast. So I went ahead and took the finish off of all of the feet and then I went ahead and screwed them back on after I was done stripping them down. I'm gonna seal this entire piece with Dixie Belle's Best Dang Wax in clear. I know this wax looks white, but it's not. It will dry clear. The reason why they made it white is so that you can see where you're putting it at on your piece. So I'm just gonna take my Dixie Belle Bell brush and I'm going to just wipe this all over the piece or brush it all over the piece. I'm gonna do circles, I'm gonna do horizontal, I'm gonna go vertical. I wanna make sure that I hit it at every angle. And so I'm gonna just apply it to the entire piece. And then after I'm done applying it to the entire piece, I'm gonna go ahead and wipe the excess off right away. I'm a huge fan of microfiber cloths. They don't leave behind any lint, so I'm wiping off all the excess wax right here, but I really like the microfiber cloths to do my waxing, to do my cleaning, to do burnishing. They just are super handy, and then you can take them and throw them in the washer and clean them and reuse them over and over and over again. So they're super, super handy. I'm gonna apply the wax to the sides and the top as well. So I'm doing the same exact process. I'm just going over the entire thing and getting all the wax and then I'm going to wipe off the excess again. Now, this is very important because this is a water-based wax. You want to let it sit for about 15 or 20 minutes and then you need to come back and you need to buff it in. You can't allow the wax to sit like you would an oil-based wax because otherwise it'll start just getting tacky and you won't be able to buff it in. So it's really important that you make sure you have time to come back 15 to 20 minutes after you have applied the wax and wiped the excess off just to come back and buff it. So I go back and I do circles and things like that when I'm buffing it and you know that it'll be buffed in when you can just kind of wipe across the area and it, your hand just goes across it smoothly or your microfiber cloth goes across it just really nice and easy. Okay, everybody, so this piece is done. I hope you enjoyed that video. I hope you found it helpful. This piece turned out better than I thought, better than I imagined. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you are not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell and you'll get all the latest videos that I put out. Again, remember everything I use will be in the description below. You just hit that little see more button. There's like a little arrow and you click on that and it'll take you and tell you everything that I used on here. So until next week, happy creating everybody. Bye. Drunk I've never seen you clearer than now We're flying high Floating somewhere up in the clouds
going out of ourselves can you feel it almost like i don't know if it's real cause when we're doing our thing we're the wheels that won't stop turning so take me on a trip 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 